Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Powell, Chairman Powell, if we can go back to the pre-pandemic and look at first where the economy was, how it was performing. Uh, were we experiencing a record economic expansion prior to the pandemic? Longest in our history. And so we saw the lowest overall unemployment, is that correct? That is, yeah, well, since in 50 years, really. Since the yeah, 60s. since the 1960s, let's yeah. say. That's right. Um, how about how it was affecting everybody? You know, we've had some that try to say it didn't impact all groups. We've seen other numbers. I've surely seen other numbers that showed that everybody benefited, but especially those lowest, uh, lowest level entry, uh, entry levels. Uh, we, we saw uh, record startups, uh, African-American unemployment, Hispanic unemployment, uh, at all-time records. Is that what you saw as well? Yes, and, and really that started to happen in the last two or three years of the very long expansion, which shows you the benefit of, of a very strong labor market. We saw a rec all-time record low unemployment since 1972 or so when we started uh, tracking it for African Americans and, and very low for Hispanics as well. All right, and obviously after the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act passed, that is when we started seeing that happen. In fact, uh, right before the bill was signed into law, we saw major companies, uh, AT&T started, and then every day there would be more announcements of companies uh, announcing bonuses and increased wages for their employees because of, uh, because of a more competitive tax rate globally. Did, did you see that same thing? You know, we don't, we don't comment on particular, the effects of particular bills, as you can imagine, uh, of any kind. I'll give you, I'll give you that, and obviously we, there, there's enough documentation uh, of those uh, reports as people would announce that they were doing it strictly because America had become competitive again. We had the highest corporate rate in the world. We made ourselves not only competitive, we had a uh, 21 percent rate when the world average was 23 percent, and then we saw all of those great benefits. We also saw record high markets, didn't we? We, we did, yeah, I guess. So when we saw the government-ordered lockdowns, whether it's businesses, schools, uh, didn't that ultimately hurt this record-setting economy? You know, I don't know that I can say that. I mean, I think the, of course, the, uh, the economy was very hard hit by the pandemic, and it's assigned to others to decide how we should have reacted. It's really not something that the Fed has expertise in or, or the ability to judge. Now, would you say that the, the lockdowns were caused by a reaction to COVID-19 becoming a global pandemic? Yes. Yeah. And did COVID-19 come from China? I, I really I don't know. Well, we'll, hopefully this committee will have that hearing on the origin of COVID. We won't have to wonder about it. Obviously, there's a lot of data out there that indicates not only did it start in China, but that it also started in the Wuhan lab. And whether it was intentional or accidental, that is a question no one should have doubt about when we could be having those hearings. So we'll continue to call for that. But you could see that straight line between the pandemic hitting from this virus that came from China and then the shutdown that had a devastating impact not only on lives, over 600,000 in America, millions worldwide, but also on this economic crisis that we're dealing with. Now I want to turn to the inflation crisis that we're seeing. As you can see right behind me, uh, we've seen a dramatic increase in the cost of many household items, everyday items that families buy, milk up 5 percent, bacon up 13 percent, gas up 56 percent, used cars up 30 percent, as we're seeing a shortage of products, harder for people to get products, supply chain backups, harder to get workers. We're seeing, as the result of that, about a 5 percent inflation rate recently. So I would ask you, Chairman Powell, is 5 percent inflation acceptable to you? No, uh, it's certainly not. So clearly we want to address this crisis. Now when you look with the unemployment crisis, there's 9.3 million job openings right now, which is a record high, yet the economy only added back 500,000 jobs in May. Uh, we've seen the enhanced unemployment being a big factor in paying people, 40 percent of the people that are getting these checks are getting more money not to work than work. Uh, that was a policy decision made here in Washington, a very flawed one. You're seeing many states try to address it, uh, but ultimately, as we have this labor shortage, as it's creating supply chain backups, as it's starting to get worse, especially on the inflation side, Chairman Powell, will the economy ever reach a full pre-pandemic level if this labor shortage continues? 
Well, if, if it continues, I, I strongly suspect that labor supply and job creation will be, will be moving up uh, well over the, over the rest of this year. And I think that will follow, as you see, many governors, half the governors in the country now have decided to end on their own that enhanced unemployment, and that is getting people back to work in those states. Unfortunately, some states uh, want to continue paying people not to work, and that's causing uh, inflation in other areas. Hopefully, we can confront this, address it. Uh, I wish you well as you look at the tools you have available to you, but hopefully we as policymakers get this right as well. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back.